Hi, I'm Reverend Paul Ashby, and I invite you to join us as we seek to follow the compassionate heart of Jesus in our world today. Hi, my name is Stacy Schulmerich. I'm the Director of Faith Formation to Children, Youth, and Families. Hi, I'm Susan. Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm Katie Scovel, and we are your music team. I'm Dan Thompson, Chair of the Worship Board. We're glad you're with us today. Though our building remains closed, the heart of our church is very much open. Please visit our website to learn more about RBCC and join us for a post-worship coffee hour. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome to our community. This is Open and Affirming Sunday. In reality, in the United Church of Christ, every Sunday is Open and Affirming Sunday for ONA churches. Last month, I mentioned that 24 states have proposed denying medical care for transgender youth. This is an ongoing battle. This month, it's up to 33 different states with 257 proposed laws all to discriminate against transgender youth. This ongoing struggle causes us, us, calls us to really be engaged in the work of mercy and justice each and every week, not simply one week per year. When we look at who we are and our struggles, many places are not having pride parades this year, but yet let us celebrate the pride that we have in our neighbors and friends whom we love as they face all sorts of dangers within our society from judgmental attitudes to finger pointing to those who are simply blind to reality. One of the things I noticed in Tulsa when we had the Pride Parade was we faced an enormous amount of opposition from large Christian churches that would bus in people to yell rather hateful, judgmental things and hold signs to try to shame the GLBT people and our church. And what you would see up close was that self-identified Christians were showing just a total lack of any form of mercy, of live and let live, of cutting others some slack. And it's when you realize and you see such faces that we have the work to do to convert people to the compassion of Jesus. And that's an every week work, an every day work for those of us in the church. So when we think of ongoing victories and ongoing challenges, let us remember the big picture, that we all need to be converted to the compassion of Jesus. Creating God, God beyond gender, who makes no mistakes, who surprises us always who molded the first person, both male and female, who molded the first non-gendered human, who loves all creation. Help us love the full diversity of your creation. Help us accept all varieties of gender in ourselves and in others. 
Help us celebrate those who are different from us, that they may learn to love each other as you love each of us. We proclaim this in the name of Jesus, who was both human and divine, just as we all are. by Lori Fournier. Sunday waking. Day is breaking. Let's go to our church for all. Church bells ringing, joyful noises, choir singing, and laughing voices. Candles glowing, banners flowing, come enter our church for all. Weak and healthy, neat and messy, poor and wealthy, plain and dressy. All embracing, spirit gracing, each one at our church for all. Bodies wiggling, mommies reading, children giggling, daddies pleading. There's room in our church for all. Hands receiving, hands connecting, hearts believing, hearts accepting. Feel the spirit. Can you hear it? It's our church for all. There was a major joy to report under joys and concerns this week, particularly for us NFL football fans. It's a joy and a victory for open and affirming Sunday that was provided by a player in the National Football League. Las Vegas Raiders defensive end, Carl Nazib, on Monday was the first self-identified gay player in the NFL. I played football in high school and in college, and I just want to say, of course, we know there have been gay players in football ever since, ever since football, okay? <laughs> but still, this took a great act of courage and was certainly a joy for this week. We also pray for the victims and those who lost family members 
who died in the high-rise building that collapsed in Miami. If you look at that situation, it was just sort of an instantaneous horror to see the building collapse and so many lives lost instantaneously. Uh, we're also grateful for the amazing courage of volunteers and firefighters who immediately started the work of rescuing people. And we just pray for their ongoing success. Peace, shalom, salam. Under concerns, we pray for the homeless who are getting sick and dying in heat waves last week across parts of the West, and this weekend in our own neighborhoods. So let us pray that the doors of compassion and the doors of air conditioning will be open to people who are most vulnerable and whose body's immunity system are already tested and challenged by living as homeless persons. Let us pray for them that they get the help they need during this heat wave. Peace, shalom, salam. I've also been in contact with those in Asia who I did interfaith peace work with in 2018. And many say a word that some of us don't hear on the news. People who I did interfaith peace work tell me just this week they would trade everything in their bank account for a COVID shot. We take so much for granted. Let's remember those in our world in need. Let us enter into prayer. Holy God, who delights in diversity, your love paints the rainbow. Your creativity spins colors across every corner of the vast universe. We delight in your love of beauty. We take joy in the experience of the variety on this earth. How boring would it be if we were all just alike? How sad would it be if there was only one model human being, one model plant, one model animal? In a world where still there is so much suffering from judgment and hate, enable us to be the people of mercy. In a world where GLBTQ neighbors and friends and relatives can still lose their job, can still lose their home due to the smallness of human hearts, let people discover the gift and wonder of an open heart. We pray for a world where all are embraced in a circle of divine love. We pray this as Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Holy God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. This is Jan Stewart Thomas coming to you to read an offering invitation from Molly Jones. Molly writes, Now that the pandemic is yielding to the skills of the scientists and researchers, I'm thinking the barbecues are heating up and friends are gathering in this great weather we're having. Did you ever think of our church as compared with a summer party? We gather together on Sundays, anticipating a refueling of our spiritual sides. For a barbecue, one brings a potato salad, another brings hot dogs and buns, still another, baked beans, beer, lemonade. We all come together to make the good times great, and by gathering in good spirits, we generate memorable, nourishing fuel for ourselves, our friends, neighbors, and so on. The good times don't just happen without generous gifts. Our church, too, relies on your generous gifts. Thank you for your ongoing support of the enrichment we receive from RBCC. The ways that you can donate 
are the following. You can give anywhere, anytime from your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Just go to the website RBCC UCC and click the Donations tab. Or you can make a donation by text. This is my favorite. The phone number is area code 206 785 2549. Or you can make a donation by mail. Simple. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Have a good week, y'all. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done. Creator Christ and Holy One. This particular song is Love is Love by Abby Bettinas from the Justice Choir Songbook. I'm going to sing the mantra first and invite you to join me afterward. I'll just sing it through one time and then we'll repeat it for a long time. Your opening pitch is love. One, two, three. Love, love, love. All we need is love, love, love. All we need is... Okay, here we go. Let's sing it. Love, love, love. All we need is 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 love. The sermon scripture for today focuses on the word holy. It is the calling of the prophet Isaiah. And note, this was so beautifully described as an experience and encounter with God. And the theologian Rudolf Otto wrote about how this describes when we encounter God truly, when we encounter God fully, it's not something that boosts our self-esteem. It's something where we see clearly that everyone is capable of mistakes and that everyone has their flaws and weaknesses. It reads as follows. In the year Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty and the hem of his robe filled the entire temple. Seraphs were attendants above him. Each had six wings. Two covered their faces, and two covered their feet, and two were used to fly. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with God's glory. Then pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called 
And the entire house of the Lord was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost. I am only a man, a man with unclean lips. And I live among people who all have unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraphim touched my mouth and with it said, Now that this has touched your lips, you are freed from guilt and your sin is removed. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go and speak for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. May the power of this experience be part of our own life. Other than in the Lord's Prayer, when's the last time you used the word hallowed? Did I hear you say, huh, or never? We just don't talk about things being hallowed in day-to-day -day conversations. Have you heard the word used on a podcast, or television, or radio, or YouTube? I think the last time I used the word hallowed was a couple decades ago. I was showing Pam around Harvard University, where I was a postdoctoral fellow, and I was giving her a tour of the second floor of Divinity Hall. And I said, with the appropriate announcer voice, in this hallowed hall, Ralph Waldo Emerson gave his famous Divinity School address to the graduating students. It is a hallowed place and room at this Divinity School now 180 some years later. The Divinity School put up a plaque that honors Emerson's presence and history for that address. Never mind, never mind that the sermon was so controversial that Emerson was condemned by conservatives and not invited back for 30 years. Yes, those scorned today are often remembered for their courage and their wisdom sometime in the future. Hallowed, in its common usage, is about honor. It's about finding things that are holy, that are beautiful, that are transcendent in this world. Of course, we can hallow the living or the dead. My closest connection to the experience of hallowing an American was my first time. And remember this if you have happened to have done this. Remember the first time you're walking up the steps of the Lincoln Memorial the place where Martin Luther King gave his speech, the place where people have gathered for justice over generations. And you're walking up there, and as you go up the steps, you feel a sense of gratitude and a little chill going up your spine. Yes, Lincoln was human. Lincoln had his flaws, but what a strong, compassionate, and great sense of humor human being he was. And he was that in a time of division and war and slavery. I also feel that sense of holy in the great cathedrals and temples in Europe and Asia. After all, hallowed is one of those ancient words that means uniquely set apart, holy. It is a powerful word that is often lost. Hallowed is central to Jewish worship. Jewish people have such a reverence for the name of God, that God's name is never pronounced. Nor is the sacred name ever written out in full. God's name was so hallowed that when God's name is used 6,828 times in the Hebrew Bible, they only wrote it with the four consonants. Y, H, W, H. Never any vowels to complete the name. In public readings, 
they don't even use that. In public reason, readings, they use a distinct cousin word, Adonai, which simply means in Hebrew, great Lord. The first time the divine name is revealed was to Moses at the burning bush. And Moses wants to know the name of this God who wants to send him to set the people free from slavery. And Come on, can we have a little sympathy for Moses here? He has been away now for 40 years from Egypt. And now he's going to just show up and say, a burning bush sent me to set you free? He's going to need more than that. First, people would say, um, Moses, you're going to set us free? You and what army? And then people would say, who are you, and what exactly was the type of bush you were smoking? And then they would definitely ask, what's the name of this God who sent you? And then Moses has to explain. Well, uh, this God doesn't have any name. Uh, this God is not like the small gods of Egypt that all have names. This, this God sort of revealed to me is too vast, too large. He, he just sort of says, I am that I am. I will be what I will be. We can only hallow a name beyond all labels, all names and all limitations. No one gets to have a handle on the Holy One. And Jewish rabbis, after the time of Jesus, developed applications about how do we hallow God's name. The first one was very practical. They said, here's the application. If you refuse to pay a bill that you owe, that could lead people to distrust God's people and not hallow God's name. So the first rule of hallowing God's name was simply pay your bills. The second thing the rabbis warned about was they told Jews not to be easily offended because people would view God as easily offended and lacking in mercy and quick to judge. I would add, when Christians are easily offended, we also have that same sort of problem. Atheist comedian Bill Maher comments on the shocking number of Christians who after the last election were what he called emotional hemophiliacs. People just bleeding emotionally all over the place and not caring about the facts, not caring about reality, not caring about the vote, just upset it didn't go their way. And so we have to be careful not to be so easily offended that others would look and say, what is wrong with them? So that was the second way in which we keep God's name hallowed, is being people who are tolerant, who are open, who are aware. Third, the rabbis preached that the way we hallow God's name is to give mercy to everybody. Isn't that wonderful? By working for mercy, God's name is held up and God's children are honored as God's holy children. And you know, open and affirming is not simply one day or one special month. It is a daily commitment to living mercy in our culture. Let's talk about living mercy. In the United Church of Christ, every Sunday is open and affirming Sunday for our ONA churches. It's not one day a year tokenism. The United Church of Christ ordained the first openly gay clergy person 49 years ago. Shocking because today, even mainline denominations are still fighting over the right for GLBT persons to be ordained. Still fighting. In the United Church of Christ, we have been on the front line for over five decades, standing, marching, speaking, hugging, loving the hallowed children of God who are GLBTQ. Anyone do any binge watching of TV programs during COVID? I didn't do any binge watching of TV shows, but I did pick up a three DVD series entitled The Young Pope from our wonderful little beach. Richmond Beach Library down the street. It, the young pope stars Jude Law as the young pope and Diane Keaton as his mentor. In the series, Jude Law, 
is this young, harsh, fundamentalist pope who wants to rid the church of all gay clergy. Just kick them out. Over time, he develops friendships. And his best friend in the Vatican advises him, tells him to practice mercy, practice tolerance towards others, give others the benefit of the doubt, cut them some slack. Now, when the young fundamentalist pope asks his closest friend to become his personal secretary, which is a very, very important job in the Vatican, personal secretary to the Pope. His friend replies with these words. I cannot accept this job because I am a homosexual and you're trying to push us all out of the church. Boom! What a revelation, a dawning of awareness for this fundamentalist who was so perfect and so certain and now saw reality. Surprisingly, the young Pope said he already knew that the person he had as a friend was a gay clergyman. The young Pope, however, because of that friendship, was converted to compassion. A lot of Christians need to be converted to compassion. The people who are opposing transgender rights more than any other people are conservative Christians in this country who, once again, need to be converted to see and discover GLBTQ persons as the hallowed children of God. In Tulsa, most Christians never referred to Fellowship Congregational Church by its name. It was simply called the Gay Church. Never mind that only 35% of our members self-identified as GLBTQ. And I was often referred to by the evangelicals and local journalists as the pastor of the gay church. It was meant, meant to be somewhat of an insult, but I would reply, you're not being accurate. Because, like Jesus, we're also open and affirming to heterosexuals. And we welcome them at every worship service. So like Jesus, we need to see only holy children of God. Through mercy, we have different eyes. Through mercy, we see, we act, and through our actions, hallow. God's name. Amen.
loving God, our mother and father, our beloved parent, in whom we move and breathe and have our being. The hallowing of your name shines forth in the diversity of your children. May your peace and love, justice and equality, inclusion and belonging reign here on earth as in heaven. And grant that our LGBTQ, transgender, and two-spirit loved ones might have their daily needs met, that they might find gainful employment without discrimination, that they might have access to medical care without fear, that they might have their rights and lives protected, and that they might find a loving community to belong to and call their own. Forgive us for the ways we have fallen short and failed your beloved children. Forgive us of the times we have turned away or did not care for the times we laughed or judged their unique expression of your image. And forgive us for the times we have misspoken or asked too much or failed to hear. Forgive us as we forgive those who might have failed us as well. Lead us away from the temptation to be complacent in the face of injustice, but instead give us courage to stand up and stand with your beloved children. For your love and your justice is to be made manifest now and forever. Amen. Just a step beyond the road.